Let's take a quick look at the fill tool introduced in Paint and Stick 1.5. Here it is, so you can just click it to get to it. Or we've introduced new hotkeys, you can press the F key for fill and it will select it. Or you can press the G key to match the hotkey in Photoshop. The first thing you're going to notice is this fill preview. When we hover over region, it's going to show where we're going to fill. The fill preview opacity is here. If you want to see it at full opacity, set it to 100%. And then when you click, you're going to notice that your preview showed exactly what the fill looked like. Or you could set it to something lower. However, I prefer it around 50%, so that's what it defaults to. You're also going to notice down here we have fill keyframes, so we can delete these. And the fill is gone. So let me explain what that does. I'm just going to move over to another drawing. Here are some circles that are drawn with different opacities. The fill tolerance decides which alpha value is seen as opaque and which is seen as transparent. So this circle was drawn at 75% opacity. So I can set this down to 75%. And you'll notice that now it respects this border. So over here, you'll notice that it's filling outside of the border of this 50% uh, opacity circle. Again, I can set this to 50 or 49 or something lower, and it's going to stay inside of it. And again, with the 25% opacity, set it to 24, 25, whatever, and it's going to stay inside of there. So we have a way of working with the fill tolerance and fill preview to make this very intuitive. I'm just going to set this back to 95, which is its default, and go back to the drawing. You'll notice that in some places it's previewing correctly, and in other places it's not, because there must be tiny holes or lower alpha values. Well, to change this fill tolerance when you're using the fill tool, you can just hold down shift and then click and drag to the left, and you'll notice that once you release it, it's made a change to the fill tolerance over here. It's actually doing it in real time with the preview. So this is a very fast way of knowing if you're going to fill a region or if you're going to overfill a region. In general, you want your fill tolerance to be as high as possible without breaking any of the boundaries. So I'm just going to shift click and drag to the right until I break the first boundary there, and then go back just a little bit to the left. And alright, it looks like 59% is the number that I landed on. So I'll just select the color that I want to use here, and I'll click to fill. So then I'm just going to repeat this process around this character. I'll select my blue, and I'm just going to shift click and drag until I start to break the boundaries, and then go back just a little bit and then click. So that's the general process, no need to show every single fill. If you want to delete or change the color of a fill, just click it again. So if I want to change this yellow star to blue, I can just click this and it will change to blue. And if I want to delete this, then I can just click it again. It will recognize that I'm using the same color to fill as I already have filled, and it will delete instead of replace. So to unfill this whole image, just click the blue parts and double click any of the parts that are not blue. Um, so let's say that you want to separate your fill. We have a switch here uh, where it says render paint. If you want just the lines, you can go to strokes only. And if you want just the fill, you can go to fill only. So maybe what we would recommend is uh, duplicating over this layer here, naming the top layer lines, and then setting it to stroke only, and then you can affect the two of these separately. So this was a pretty simple fill situation because all of our lines were drawn uh, pretty opaquely, but sometimes you're going to have situations where filling is not as easy. Let's take a look at this animation here. We have this lightning, and we have a lot of shapes that aren't quite closed. So first let's just go ahead and fill the shapes that we're able to fill using the J and K keys to go between keyframes. And you'll notice there are a lot of areas where we're just not going to have any luck because the shapes aren't completely closed. But we still have to fill them. Uh, so what do we do about that? Well, this is a situation where splitting your fill layer and your lines layer uh, can be a very good option. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to uh, duplicate over these layers, name the bottom one fill, and name the top one lines. And then I'm just going to hide the lines layer because I don't need to see this for a bit. And I'm going to select the fill layer and I'm going to make my brush pink uh, just because I want to uh, make it really obvious what I'm doing here. I'm going to make my brush about the same weight as these lines here. I'll just control click and drag on Windows, command click and drag on Mac. So now I have this little pink brush and I can use this to try to fill in these borders. So I'll start with this line here. 
and I'm just going to draw this closed. And I'll just press F, going back to the fill tool. Maybe I'll bring up the uh, tolerance a bit. Something like that. I'll select my fill color and click here. So now what you may be thinking is, oh, these borders are uh, really ugly. I don't want that. Uh, well, what's going to happen is uh, the reason why we've included this uh, tool to uh, separate your fill and your lines is so you don't have to see those. So under Render Paint, you can just set this to Fill Only. And you'll notice it's just going to show the fill here. And then for the lines, the lines will go over the top like that. So you're not actually seeing these uh, corrective lines underneath. Uh, so that's why um, we would recommend doing two layers which have both the uh, the lines and the fill, you know, rather than splitting the keyframes. Because if you still have the lines on the layer, even if you're not actually seeing them, you can still fill inside of them. And that's going to allow you to make simple corrections with your brush that you don't have to see on your lines layer. So I'm just going to go through and finish this frame. Okay, so I'm still on stroke only. I'm going to set this back to stroke and fill to make this all a little bit easier. And now I'm going to go through and try to finish this frame. So up here, rather than switch back to my pink color, I'm just going to stick with this uh, color that I'm filling with. And I'm just going to uh, go around and uh, finish this line. Finding any areas that might look a little bit iffy. I don't have to be too precise with this. I'm, I'm kind of just trying to fill on the outside, actually. Alright, I think that looks good. So now I'll press F. And I can fill that. This one's a total mess, so I'll hold shift, click, and drag to the left to see uh, if it has to do with my fill tolerance or if the shape isn't closed. Alright, my fill tolerance is back at zero, so I'm guessing the shape isn't closed, so I'm just going to go look around the borders and see if I can close them. Right here. I'll toggle back to my fill tool, that was it. I'll bring up the fill tolerance a little bit. Right to there. Then fill that. Alright, and that looks pretty good. So I'll take this fill layer, and I'll set it to fill only, and then I can turn my lines back on. So that was a pretty simple example of how to uh, fill areas that haven't been fully closed. But I'm just going to jump back to this example because I want to show you some of the benefits of splitting up your lines in your fill. So right now if we take a look, our fill is actually looking pretty good. There's really not much we'd have to do for compositing here to make this look better. Uh, so just for example's sake, I'm just going to uh, delete the fills. And I'm going to set my fill tolerance down to 1% so we can get a pretty bad looking fill. And I can show you how you would correct that if this situation ever happens where maybe uh, your lines aren't perfect and connected, uh, they're not at full opacity, and you just have to very quickly fill it with a low tolerance and uh, fix the rest of the composite. So I'm just going to go through and uh, use the 1% fill tolerance to fill this character with cringeworthy fills. Wow. That is ugly looking. So odds are your lines are never going to be this bad that your fills are going to turn out this bad. But I just want to do a worst case scenario so you have an idea of how you could fix this if any of your fills are giving you trouble or have bad borders. So first I'm just going to solo my fill layer for a second. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grow this fill. Uh, there's one technique that I always use in After Effects. First, add a fast blur. And I'm just going to set this to like 2. So 2 pixels is how much we're going to grow by. You're going to notice that that didn't do anything really when I turned on the lines. I mean, it made it look a little bit better, but what you have to do is you have to combine it with curves. From here, choose alpha and uh, just drag this over. This is basically just uh, increasing the alpha of your fill. So if you take a look, this technique has uh, moved the fills outward and expanded them so they reach the lines. And they uh, look pretty good, actually. So I just want to explain exactly what this is doing. Let me hide the curves for a second. So what this blur is doing is this blur is moving the colors outward. Uh, well, just blurring. If we take a look at the RGB straight without the alpha values, it's showing you which colors are on the RGB channels uh, without the alpha to make them transparent. So I'll just go back to RGB mode. And what this curves does is it's basically just boosting the alpha here. So I'll bring that down and then back up. So you can see that it's forcing the semi-transparent alpha values to become opaque. So what you can do here is you can basically just reset this fast blur, bring it back down to zero, and then just slowly dial it in until you grow your fills until they uh, correctly fill the areas. So the beautiful thing about doing your cell animation with Paint and Stick and After Effects is you're not limited to just Paint and Stick's tool set. You have all the great After Effects effects in there too to make everything way easier. Here it is before, here it is after. I'm just going to delete these effects. Now, I don't know why you would want to do this, uh, but just in case, 
That was showing how to grow the fill. There's also this tool, the simple choker, that can shrink the fill. Again, I'm not sure why you would use it. Just know that this tool is here if you ever want to shrink your fill. Thanks for watching. For more info, check out aescripts.com slash paint and stick.